Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I built out my William Optics Zenith Star 61 Mod 2 over the course of 2021. And with it, I'll include costs for the different components. But I want to say up front that um, I built it out to what I anticipated my needs to be being in a Bortle 89 zone. And uh, I added a lot of complexity early on. And uh, if you saw my other video about uh, the biggest mistake I made in uh, uh, 2021 or astronomical imaging, it was the issue around my filters and not understanding what was going on there. But what I really want to say is, you know, maybe if I had gone at a slower pace, I would not have run into that issue. And clearly there are probably more efficient and cost effective ways to build out uh, a telescope than the path that I took. I was operating without a lot of information at the time. It was early on, I was excited to get going, and uh, I may not have done uh, the best homework, including uh, understanding that my backyard was really limited in its view of the sky. And um, early on back then, because I could see Orion, I thought, well, I could see all the other nebulas in that little window of sky I had to work with, and that wasn't true. And, uh, you know, I built this system out because I thought I'd be imaging in a Bortle 8.9, and that's what took me into the monochrome camera and filters. That's what caused me to, you know, move away from my Canon uh, uh, 6D, which was unmodded. Uh, only the irony is later to really do most of my imaging out in the uh, Southern California desert in a Bortle 4 uh, zone where the filters uh, and monochrome camera may not have been as important and I could have made do with a one-shot colored camera. So, you know, in a lot of the comments I get from viewers, um, you're suggesting uh, simpler or more cost-effective ways to build out a telescope and to automate the process of uh, deep sky object imaging. And uh, clearly, uh, there are probably more cost-effective ways in the route that I went. Once I decided to get into astrophotography and purchase a telescope, I need, knew uh, I needed a mount, and I found a person that was selling one on cloudy nights. Uh, so I purchased the HEQ-5. I really wanted to get the Red Cat 51, but it was out of stock pandemic time. And so I just took a guess, selected the Xenostar Z61 Mod 2. I think it's a fantastic uh, starter scope for me and focal length. I needed a guide scope, so I stuck with William Optics, and then I purchased the uh, ZWO ASI 120mm mini scope. Um, good pair with my Xenostar. So here's a view of a very simple setup early on. I was using my Canon 6D, uh, simple setup, and I decided to go complex. I did add the uh, Pole Master. Um, it's been a great tool. I'm getting value from the purchase. Uh, makes alignment very easy and straightforward. I took a shot and took a guess at what camera would be appropriate using astronomy tools to help me uh, define pixel size and those type of attributes and I got lucky. Uh, I wanted a smaller filter wheel but the, there were none available so I went with an 8 position filter wheel. And then my tablet was having issues providing enough light for my flat, so I went with the uh, Flatmaster 150, good purchase in my mind. This is my best purchase overall. It has enabled me to sleep during the night, uh, electronic, automatic autofocuser, uh, great value I'm getting from it. And uh, Pocket Power Box Advance, a good purchase, a little pricey, but helps with cable management and clean Meridian flips. And then I needed a cover for my uh, scope because I can go to sites and leave it set up for multiple days. It, this uh, Telegizmos cover protects it from the sun and elements. 
And here I am in Borrego Springs, California. And then finally, uh, I didn't identify the cost for this, but I have leased a pad at Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station in Landers, California. That's where I go to Image now. It's a portal for a zone. And I'm headed down there this weekend to redo the offsets for all my filters. Okay, well, I hope some of the information I've shared with you is helpful, in particular to new people that may be considering getting into astrophotography or, you know, have a telescope and you're thinking about what are the costs to build it out. Um, again, as I said in the uh, beginning of this video, uh, I was operating with limited information at the time and I made what I thought were the best decisions for me. Everybody's needs are probably different and uh, clearly there are some uh, simpler uh, approaches to this using one-shot colored cameras, whether that be a DSLR or a modded DSLR or even a dedicated one-shot colored camera. Uh, again, I, I was trying to anticipate what I would need for imaging in a Bortle 8-9 uh, zone when in reality, uh, through a turn of events, I'm doing my imaging in a Bortle 4 zone. So. Again, I hope this information is of some use. So if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, I'm going to be heading down to uh, Goat Mountain Astronomical Research Station, as I indicated uh, in this video. And I'm very excited about the 2022 uh, nebula season that will be coming our way in a, in a couple of months. I'm very uh, invigorated again and looking forward to sharing uh, some content with you around what I'm doing and where I'm going and what I'm learning. All right, thanks for dropping into the channel and I'd like to thank all the people that have taken time to subscribe. See you next time.